Hey folks, Engineer775. I want to talk to you a little bit about an awesome new product from Franklin and uh, Franklin Pumps. This isn't it. <laughs> this is a Grunfuss pump that I'm replacing with a Franklin Pump system. This is a, a pump that looks really rough. It's been in service for 10 years in a pretty rough environment and it's been pumping groundwater back into a pond. But if you look inside of this thing, you'd see that it is just jam-packed full of all sorts of dirt. It's been taken apart several times and cleaned. And, but these are great pumps, but they probably should not be in this environment. So what I'm going to be doing is switching this entire solar water pumping system over to a photon system. Photon is made by Franklin. And let me show you a little bit about it. So, um, all right. Okay, hope you can hear me. There's a little bit of wind noise here. Um, what I'm looking at right now is the photon controller. And I wanted to take the cover off so you could see what was going on. We're basically receiving high voltage direct current DC from the solar array. And you size these pumps to the amount of solar and your pumping needs, how many gallons a minute, total dynamic head, typical things in, that you do when you're sizing a pump for a job. And then the controller and the motor is sized to it. When you get a photon kit, you get a box and you kind of have to do some assembly. So here's the pump head. It's a centrifugal pump head. And here's the Franklin motor that if you've been in the industry or know, maybe you haven't, that the Franklin motors are just notorious for lasting a long time, like 50 years. This thing is crazy heavy, you know, 30, 40 pound, lots of copper, not the aluminum windings you see in some of the cheaper pumps. So it is a real pump motor. Um, so it comes disassembled. You kind of have to you have to do an assembly. It's no big deal. And so the, what's going on here? The beauty of this is that I can take DC direct current, and this controller will convert it to three phase AC current. This is a four wire a four wire pump. So this is like a standard submersible pump motor that I can run off of solar. And what does that do for me? Well, number one, it gives me a great long running motor. Number two is I can put a variety of heads on it that I could even pump um, effluent. I could pump um, water out of a septic system. I could get into some really nasty, dirty water and have a head that is, you know, matched to the type of water that you're pumping. The Grunfoss is a great pump. I put one in almost every other week, but um, they're not really made for this type of dirty water application. So I talked to the um, experts at Franklin and they hooked me up with a subdrive solar pump uh, with a photon drive okay you can also get these with an adder board it's another uh, controller that allows you to actually run AC power so I can run this off of DC and I can run it off of AC and they make a little controller mounting hardware all the fun stuff to get this to go so we're gonna go install this in Georgia and we're going to be filling a pond at probably 30 to 35 gallons a minute coming out of this pump. I'm going to talk to you about um, how we're going to mount this in a tank and we're going to introduce you to uh, flow sleeves and pump stands. Maybe you haven't seen them. Um, things that will keep this motor cool. There's some things that you can do. This is a big investment and a lot of people don't understand that if this motor is running and and the water is just being brought in through the intake that motor can actually heat up and so in order to keep a pump motor cool what you want to do is you want to bring the water as you're pumping as it's sucking it into the intake you just want to bring that cold new fresh water across that motor to keep it cool the motor will last even longer so we're going to put this together show you some of the things we want to show you the flow sleeve the pump stands and more about the photon solar inverter pump controller i saw these at spi in Vegas and at Intersolar in San Francisco, talked to the reps and uh, had a sales rep come visit me. And so this is going to be my first project, getting a lot of good support from Franklin. And uh, one of their chief technicians from Indiana is going to come down and meet me at the installation in Georgia, which I thought was pretty impressive. So I'm just getting my parts together, make sure that I have what I need to do to do a good job. And then we will um, uh, put this photon in. So there's all sorts of... Uh, jumpers and controls for like float switches and there's flow meters there's a lot of things there's a lot of controls in here to keep this pump from dry running from deadheading and they've pretty much thought through all the problems that you can have with the the pump head or the pump motor and because when you go into the solar water pumping world you've got a lot of you know you're dealing with clouds low power in the in the morning low power at night 
and you just don't want that motor humming away doing nothing. So there's a lot of protection to keep this motor from uh, deadheading, the pump from deadheading, the motor from overheating, and that's it. So let's put it together and I'll show you the final product before it goes into the well or the water system. So you never get to see these things and we just wanted to show you them out as, as they come out of the box before they get installed in a water tank or a well. All right, we're doing everything we know of to keep this pump in good condition. Here's the intake for the flow sleeve. And we see the top we've plumbed in our connection. We have an inch and a quarter pipe that connects to, to some existing plumbing. And so in order to line up with that, the reason I'm doing two street 90s here is because of the pump stand. Just give you a little better view here. Okay, pump stands are recommended when you put uh, tanks on their, uh, I mean, pumps on their side inside cisterns or tanks. And the reason for that is to have some, using gravity, some of the, uh, th the thrust bearing actually loaded up. When they sit on their side, it's just not a good way to run that bearing shaft. So Franklin recommends a 15 degree angle for their pumps to sit. Nobody does it, from what I can tell. Uh, maybe some people do, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. But this company called Flow Sleeve has a cool little pump stand that you can just clamp on to the flow sleeve and get your angle right. But that was going to mess up our plumbing angle, of course. So adding two street 90s can get you back in business. So the union is at the job site. We're just going to take this, slide it on through down into the tank, connect the union, and we'll be in business. Make our wire connection. So that's everything we know of how to keep this uh, pump from burning up. Keep it nice and cool. And now it's time to work on the electrical side of things and uh, get this photon controller mounts. And uh, anyway, we have two of these to do. And then I found out we have another job just like it. So maybe this is a, we'll be doing this for the next couple of weeks, trying to figure out how to move a lot of water again we're not just moving a couple gallons this is 30 gallons a minute plus being pumped out of a groundwater source with solar to a pond 